The first time I went hunting, I think my uncle asked me at Thanksgiving when I was 15 years old, he sat me down on a stump on the edge of the hardwoods and the cedars. There's this kind of cedar swamp in there and there's this creek that flows through the back of this property. It's a deer trail and basically said, you've got a radio, don't move until I come back. I just remember being hyper tuned in to everything. There was just the sound of the creek and nothing else. And it's just dead quiet. I've lived around these woods and spent time and walked through them and I've never like watched the world wake up in the morning. So that was my first, and I was just hooked. This isn't gonna be like one load out. No. Well, let's not delay this any longer. So I'm just gonna start and cut straight down the backbone. It's a big lump of spine right there. I think at this point when I'm breaking down an animal, oftentimes I'll replay stuff in my head how the day went and you're thinking about all the good meat, I'm trying to get stuff done as cleanly as possible and right up the back. Oh, that is a nice fat cafe. I'd say the bulk of what I eat in a year is wild game. And for me, that's how I prefer to keep it. At the end of the day, nothing else feels like hunting, man. The idea of field to table is that you are responsible for the entire process of the meat you're consuming, right? Locked in. Sweet. When you go into a grocery store, you know, meat, it's wrapped in plastic, everything's ready for you, it's nice, it's clean. And what that does is it disconnects you from realizing where that came from and really appreciating that that was actually a life form, right? And I think that that's something, you know, we need a little bit more of. And then, yeah. I'm gonna side up. Yeah. Even if it's an easy, you know, walk around for a little bit and lucky enough to shoot a deer, it's still a lot of work to turn that into food on the table, a lot of work. And I don't even just mean the cooking side of it, like field dressing that animal is not a small amount of work. Oh, that's... Most of the meat's all in game bags now. We're not gonna be able to take it all out tonight. Take everything we can, but there's no question another load's gonna be required. but we're gonna hike everything we can all the way back tonight, not just to spike camp. Spend the night at the wall tent, probably have a bit of a celebration, and then uh, we'll hike back in here as early as we can tomorrow to pick up the rest. Easy doesn't. Twisted this way. Oh, yep, that works too. Watch the gun. Oh. <laughs> Wide load. How's that feel? Not bad. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bud the spud from the bright red mud. Rolling down the highway, smiling. The big bull's dead and the pack out's ahead. We're heading back to wall camp tonight. You good? Yeah. Oy. You're holding it? Just lift the back end up. All the way. Yeah, good. I got, it. I got it. Whether you're running a marathon, or you're climbing a mountain, or you're hunting and backpacking, that's a hell. You're going to encounter all of these elements that are going to make you want to quit. My legs are sore. I want to quit. My back is sore. I want to quit. This is too heavy. I want to quit. And if you can't push through those mental blocks, and if you don't want it, it's not gonna happen. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Anytime you go through anything difficult 
and despite those challenges, achieve success, it's always really fulfilling. Take a little water break here. Yonky. <sighs> Any goal you set out for yourself, if you have to deal with shittier circumstances than you expected to, it's way more fulfilling when it's all said and done. Well, the thing was done. We did what we came here to do, man. Yeah. Kind of a good, weird feeling. What a f***ing day, boy. Oh, yes. Man, nicely done. Monsieur. Congratulations. Is it the same ball? Not sure. We don't know. <laughs> it's a pig, though. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, man. Oh. We'd say it's type two fun, right? Type two fun, you're not actually having fun in the moment. You're just kind of struggling through and you're questioning why you even decided to do this and why did I put in for this tag and why do I do this as my vacation time? Yeah, we got another four game bags up there and a part of our camp's up there, too. This is all like nice, fresh regrowth. We've definitely had a well-earned down day in camp today. Lots of relaxing, lots of chit chat. Elk skull cleaned up, a nice fire going, done close to 100K, or that is 60 miles on the trip so far. So well-earned down day, well-earned down day. I just wanted to just take a look. Which one did we decide? Was oh, no, wait, that's the heart. That's yeah. the heart. So that's not the back straps. Oh, we should just eat the heart. We're eating the heart tonight, eh? Hey, you want to eat the heart tonight? Yeah, dude. Okay, I'm going to butcher this up. I have a lot of trust in you. Let's grill this. Holy. Look at that, that's like three pound steak. I've never hunted with Mark Perrier before. He's someone I would consider a friend. He's a chef in Vancouver and has a couple of restaurants here. I try as much as possible to take out all these kind of veiny bits. Okay. I think he brings a unique aspect to hunting because he comes from a culinary background. A little garam masala. So for him, everything is purely about food and the adventure as well. But his vision for what that meat becomes in the end is just so delicious. I've cooked stuff on like just twigs before. Yeah, this would be okay, actually. <laughs> wow. Hey boys, you gonna try some heart? It's gotta be good for you, eh? After a workout? Mm, so tender. Super tender. Always amazes me how tender it is. There's a recipe called cruda, but it's Italian, right? Yeah. It's literally salt and olive oil. For me, when we talk about a trophy, that might be something on the wall, but so is the elk roast on the platter in the middle of the table and a group of people and a nice bottle of wine. It's also a pretty damn good trophy too. This is incredible. Eating raw meat, right? But this like, is the highlight for me of this trip. Come on, you don't invite a chef on a hunt and not be like, we're eating raw elk meat. We're eating, we're doing some kind of elk carpaccio out there. It's happening. I've like eaten a chunk of blacktail neck, just like cut it out and ate it raw and was like, that didn't really taste that great. Well, that'd be gross. Yeah, it just tastes like blood. Just, uh, yeah, I just neck. always wanted to eat raw meat. If you go to the restaurant, dude, this is actually how we do it. Just takes a while. I'd say this is preferable to any farm meat, though. Yeah, right? For sure. Oh, dude, this smells so good. I know. Olive oil, too. You're a wizard, Harry. A little bit chilly. I mean, you gotta have it seasoned, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think that's gonna be nice with that olive oil, dude. Go yeah. for it. Yeah, here. Yeah, try it. See how she is. I didn't try it for seasoning, actually, so I should. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Not that I had any doubt. Mm -hmm. That's for you, dude. Uh, has almost like a raw tuna in. Like tuna tart? Yeah. 
you know, just chopped up raw elk with olive oil and salt and pepper. Just that, you know, eating that on the beach. Such a cool experience. Dude, <laughs> nice work. Wow, nice work killing it. There you go. All right, I'm getting there, right? The centerpiece is gonna be these Roosevelt elk strip loin steaks. Got a little bit of wild salad, bitter cress, and miner's lettuce. Got a bit of oil vinegar. I'm gonna make a side dish here out of a bunch of different forged wild mushrooms that I forged while unsuccessfully trying to kill a deer. You got yellowfoot chanterelles, you got uh, hedgehog chanterelles, you got regular chanterelles, and a couple types of oyster mushrooms. That's it. Who's going for a steak here? And this should be good too, man. Just spoon this up and then, yeah, go for it, dude. Oh, man. It's gonna be nice and rare, but money. Nice. If you think you can't get out into the wilderness or the back country or something like that, you probably can. And like, look, wilderness is relative. You don't need to be on these epic trips all the time. And quite frankly, you've probably got a lot of opportunity around you that you don't even know that you have. Just go for it, like make the effort. Straight shoot, man. <laughs> got it done. Good cooking, man. I think one of the beautiful things about hunting is it's kind of like a choose your own adventure book, right? This isn't a field, this is like fjord to table. <laughs> you can write that story however you want to do it. If you want to only hunt with a bow, that's your story. If you only want to hunt with a rifle, that's your story. I think especially when you're in the backcountry, it gives you a freedom of choice that a lot of times people don't have in other aspects of life. I need your greens. Mm -mm -mm. In our DNA, humans crave adventure and exploration and all of the things that we no longer get in society. Cheers. 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 The more we get comfortable, I believe that the more that we need that in our life to actually enrich us and make us feel alive. And hunting is an outlet for that. If we lose that, we lose something. What that is, I'm probably not the best one to talk about that. But if we lose hunting, we lose something as a species.